Okay, let's look at another question. When dealing with atheists, often the question comes up, can atheists be moral? Uh, often uh, atheists will complain to Christian apologists that um, when, when Christian apologists point out that atheism doesn't have any uh, solid theory of morality, uh, they think that what they're saying is that atheists themselves can't choose to live ethically. And so the question, can atheists be moral, can be answered uh, very easily. Yes, they can. They can be as moral, and in fact, in some cases, more moral than Christians can. But the, the question really is not a, a very good question. It's kind of superficial. Anybody can choose to live morally, and hopefully they will. But a more interesting question is this. Does atheism itself support a moral theory that is actually livable? And I think that the answer to that question has got to be a resounding no. Uh, atheism believes that there is no God. So if there is no God, then there is no ethical law giver to tell us what is right or wrong. There is no adjudicator uh, for human beings. That leaves human beings to decide what's right and wrong among themselves. And they've done a bang-up job of that in history, as uh, anyone knows, or anyone who reads the newspaper can see. In fact, if we look into our own lives and our own hearts, if we examine our own thoughts and our own motives, which many people don't like to do, we will see that, uh, that many of our motives and many of the reasons that we uh, give ourselves for uh, doing certain things or not doing other things are actually not completely pure. Uh, often we're angry, but we're angry because we're proud. We're angry because our feelings get hurt or uh, because we haven't gotten our way. In other words, our anger is unethical. Often uh, we do good things not because we love the other person, but just because it makes us feel good to do those things. Well, that kind of altruism is really selfish, isn't it? It's not... Uh, for the other person, it's really for ourselves to make ourselves feel good. Um, we can have all kinds of uh, ideas of what's moral and not moral. And in fact, if you look at uh, many thinkers down through the ages, they have disagreed on what's moral and immoral. Uh, racism, slavery, uh, all kinds of uh, abuse of uh, different people groups, caste systems and so on, uh, have often been thought by different peoples to be moral. And then others down the road have thought them to be immoral. Who is to decide who is right? If you say that it is the majority, then the problem comes up, well, the majority, for example, in Nazi Germany, thought it was okay to gas Jews. Uh, would you agree with that, just because uh, right and wrong can be uh, decided on the count of noses? I don't think that's a very good and very solid ethical theory. What about uh, the so-called experts? Should we just leave everything up to them, uh, the scientists and so on? Well, uh, there are these uh, mythical creatures that uh, inhabit the imaginations of some people, uh, that they are wholly uh, out for the improvement of the world and wholly unconcerned with themselves and with their own urges and their own motives, but they don't live in the real world. The people that live in the real world will often say that um, uh, there is no... Uh, no final court of appeal uh, for humans to go to, if of course they don't believe in God. 
and uh, therefore the only moral decision would be based on, well for many people, what they call common sense. And the problem with that position is uh, what's common sense to one group of people isn't common sense to another group of people. Uh, that's a very variable target. Uh, also, what is common sense to, say, an atheist is not common sense to a Hindu. And what's common sense to a Hindu is not common sense to a Christian in the West. So uh, uh, common sense is really uh, not anything but an evasion. It's a smokescreen. Moreover, uh, for an atheist who believes that, uh, in most cases they do anyway, no such thing as the mind, no such thing as God, they all believe that, no such thing as a transcendent ethical more. Um, those people would often say that we are simply evolved machines. They are physicalists uh, as far as the brain is concerned. No soul. Well, if there's no soul, if all there is is uh, uh, the molecular uh, function of each person, uh, which is just governed by the laws of physics and chemistry, then I hope you see that any uh, idea of prescribing uh, absolute right and wrong is just a chimera. It doesn't exist. It's not something that can exist in that worldview. Um, we will act and think the way that we have been predetermined to act and think and that's the beginning and the end of it. So if you hold to the, that kind of position where we are simply uh, the products of the firing of uh, synapses and neurons in the brain, a la Daniel Dennett and Richard Dawkins and uh, a whole bunch of people like them, then you cannot really have a solid ethical theory that you can sign up to. All you can do is that you can choose to live in a certain way, but that way will often actually be borrowed from the Christian worldview that you as an atheist say that you reject. It will not be based on anything that you can get from your atheism.